Welcome to UND Sports Extra. I'm your host, Dan Hammer. On tonight's show, the UND football team returns home this weekend after back-to-back -back road games in the Big Sky. Head coach Bubba Schweigert will be with us to preview Montana State and also look back at the highlights of last Saturday's loss at Montana. Also tonight, UND women's hockey forward Amy Menke, the team's leading scorer, joins the show. Her team is getting ready to face the rival. Minnesota is at the Ralph this coming Thursday and Friday. And we'll also talk some UND volleyball as Mark Pryor's team also returns home after an extended road trip. North Dakota made the trip to Missoula, Montana last Saturday. One of the great environments in all of FCS football. Came out of it with a 42-16 loss. Coach, good to be back with you again. This game really turned on a couple of big plays that went Montana's way. Yeah, it sure did. You know, we had momentum early in the game with the big uh, scoring play. And uh, with six minutes left in the half, we were ahead 10-7 and just allowed two big plays. And you really can't do that if you want to win games on the road. you got to eliminate those explosive plays from your opponent's offense, and we were unable to do that. Well, and always tough to uh, rally back from a big deficit, but with the way your team is built, it increases the difficult nature of that. Yeah, we want to play in close games. Yeah. Uh, the way we're built right now and what we need to do is control the football and get out in front and force teams to, you know, catch us. And, uh, you know, once we lose the lead, and a two-score game is manageable. Once it gets to three scores, it becomes much more difficult for us. And we know we're working on those things to try to become better at throwing the football, but we're built a little bit differently right now. Because of injuries, one of the factors why you're built a little bit differently, and they played into the outcome again in Montana on Saturday, and we'll take a look at the highlights next. UND Sports Extra on Midco Sports Network is presented by the University of North Dakota, RidelCars.com, and Farmers Union Insurance. Welcome back, North Dakota and Montana. Bubba, let's take a look at the highlights from last Saturday at Washington Grizzly Stadium in Missoula. He at least had uh, some encouraging signs. Cole Reyes was back in the lineup for you on Saturday. Yeah, not 100% yet, but uh, he had a good week of practice, and it was limited reps, but uh, we just needed to get him back out there. He's one of our leaders on defense. Good start to the very early stages of the game for your team. Yeah, we get a three and out after they had got a big kickoff return and established pretty good field position. We force a punt, and... And this is a good start. You know, we get a sack, a good scheme by the defensive staff, and executed well by our defense. And your first offensive play from scrimmage, you get the home run ball thanks to John Santiago. Yeah, you know, we just uh, really executed that play well, and we're finding out that if John gets in the open field, he's tough. He can take it the distance. 7 nothing. Santiago's 80-yard touchdown run, just a foreshadow of a big day to come for him. You trade a couple punts here, and then Montana goes to the air, and that's this is a kind of a foreshadow of things to come, too. Well, we get him to third down, and uh, they're going to get us one-on-one -on -one in, in situations, and we just got to battle and try to get better at these situations. But they're very good at those positions. How about ball security Saturday, Bubba? That, that was something that was a thorn in your side. Yeah, it's on the ground too much. We didn't lose too many. But, no, you didn't. Uh, but it, it just... You know, keeps you on your heels a little bit, ruins some momentum. And, you know, the QB exchanges, we really got to get that squared away. Those hurt us. Mm -hmm. and, and, again, you only lost one, but five times you put it on the field. And it, it was coming in different facets of the game. Yeah, you, you know, you just got to play a cleaner game. It gives you confidence. It keeps you in sync. And, and this is one that really hurt after they had gone ahead, you know, just – I wasted down, and we can't afford to waste downs. Big stop for your defense. Montana goes for it on fourth and one. Jake Disterhop and Brian Labatt come up with the stop, and then you're going to turn that into points here. Yeah, this was big. You know, they, we knew they'd go for it on fourth down a lot here. John Heck just of a kinda, play here. <laughs> he just improvises, and he, he's very tough in the open field, and he's very strong, and, and I think he's got people's attention. I know the Montana people were really impressed with him. Oh, his stiff arm uh, is getting people's attentions across the league, too. Brady Oliveira, good day, and and then Santiago's going to run again. Your running game was good in this game again. Yeah, it is. It's been pretty consistent. And, you know, we just need to finish off these drives with touchdowns, especially against the high-powered offenses in the big sky. Yeah. Well, so you get to the five-yard line, and then here's where it bogs down a little bit. You're not able to finish it and get six out of the deal. Yeah, you know, when it comes down to executing and really being good in these situations, and we're not as sharp as we'd like, and we address those concerns every week and just got to get better and better right down there in the red zone. Get the field goal, you go up 10-7. Then a couple of plays that, as we talked about, really turn the game and their big-time plays for the passing game from Montana. Yeah, you know, and they're very good at receiver. We knew that coming in, and this was a concern of ours. We challenged our guys, and, 
I thought our work teams did a good job of giving the best look they could during the week, but uh, it's nothing like game day. And You know, you just got to be able to knock down some of these balls and win some of these battles when it's one-on-one. -on -one. Ellis Henderson catching back-to-back -back touchdown passes. I mean, well-known talent there. Guy's been around in the league for a while, so he's a good player. But those two plays uh, late in the first half really swing the game. So what's your message here at the half in Missoula? Well, we talked to our team. We get the ball first, and we need to come out and get the first score of the second half to make yeah. it a one-score game because the game's it's not out of hand at this time. We're in this thing, and we had played well, and that was the challenge to the team, get the first score of the second half. What you do, you have possession to begin the second half. Let's take a look at second-half highlights here. And, and you always talk about week-to-week, -week, Bubba, getting off to that positive start to begin the second half. Unfortunately, that was not the case for your team on Saturday. Yeah, you know, we run a play here on third down. It was a little bit longer yardage that we'd like and just should throw it away there. It's a decision that uh, we aren't happy with, and uh, we just got to make better decisions in those situations. And in Montana, we'll turn that turnover into points, and then suddenly it's 28-10. Now the hill gets a little steeper for you. Yeah, just some uh, missed tackles, a little miscommunication, and, and not playing well in this situation where we needed to force a field goal again. Some things that you can build off in this game. One, Brady Oliveira got his biggest workload of his young career on Saturday. 16 rushes, 68 yards. What are you seeing out of Brady here as he progresses well, this season? Good physical runner. We liked him in a recruiting process. We liked him early in fall camp, and then he had that foot injury that uh, held him back, yeah. you know, and now he's back to 100%. He's helping us on special teams, too, so he's contributing in more ways than just carrying the football. And John Santiago, uh, the, the superlatives for what this young man has done here, and again, his true freshman season. He's running with confidence. He's being more physical. His stiff arm is working well against everybody, and another big day, a career day. Yeah, he's uh, you know able to make plays for us and change field position in the run game and and get a lot of attention by the defense. And we need to be able to take advantage of that. That they're going to pay attention to him and 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 you know here we see him catching the ball on a pass. He's a good return man and does a lot of things for a football team. 299 all-purpose yards for Santiago on Saturday. As we said, Cole Reyes got back into the lineup. Uh, he's important for your team, not only for what he does, just from a tackling standpoint, from a leadership standpoint. No question. We need Cole out there and didn't practice the entire week. You know, we got him limited reps in practice, and Friday he felt like he was ready to go, and Saturday morning I, th I think he was really ready to go. But, you know, he... He had sat out a couple weeks again, so he wasn't right. as sharp as we'd like maybe, but uh, this week we expect him to be 100%. All right, fourth quarter, the game is, is pretty much in hand at this point, uh, but, but yet some positives here as you put together what was your best drive of the day offensively. Well, we encourage our guys to play the entire game, and the, everything's important that we do as we grow our program, and you just got to keep competing. And here we get our passing game going a little bit better than it has been the past couple weeks, so that was a positive sign. Yeah. And then uh, Josh Seibel's going to run for 11 yards here on the jet sweep. And you're, you're going to march the field here and score a touchdown, at least get a little positive feeling back offensively as you leave Montana. Yeah, I think it's important how you finish games. Here you see us convert a first down with a QB run. And all those things, you know, give you momentum for the next week. And it tells you a lot about your football team. Injuries have forced you to move some people around on the defensive side, give some other people opportunities. Dylan Bacher saw his most extended playing time on Saturday. Well, with the tempo of the game that Montana's going to play, you need to play a lot of guys, so you keep guys fresh. And, and then we moved some guys. You know, uh, Juwan Johnson moved up and yep. played some outside linebacker. And Tanner Palmbart played for the first time as a true freshman at right. safety. We just had to get more bodies involved in the game to stay fresh. Yeah, Bacher uh, on the day, uh, 14 tackles, three solo, 42-16. The final, Ryan Bartles, 10 of 21. You see Santiago's and Oliveira's strong rushing numbers there, and Luke Stanley had a couple catches on the day. Here's what your players had to say following the game. We just got to execute better. Same thing every week when we give a big play. He's got to execute better, read our keys better. Um, and it's not just the DBs. Um, even though they're big pass plays, we got to get a pass rush up front, and we got to stop the run better because not stopping the run and not getting a pass rush that allows big Plays. In the defensive backs, we let up two, two touchdowns pretty much back to back, and that kind of spun the thing around. So, I mean, we just got to be better in the back row. I mean, our eyes, communication, everything. And I mean, especially me being a leader back there, I put that on me, I put that on us, and we just got to be better. I felt like in the beginning we had a rhythm, we kept going and going, but near the end, 
Uh, they caught on. They knew we were running the ball. Uh, the pass game wasn't that successful. We're going to work on that for sure because we gotta we got to be two-dimensional. We can't just be one-dimensional and just run the ball. And I got down on myself. All the cornerbacks got down on themselves. But at the end of the day, it's either we're going to sit down and quit or we're going to fight and be known as that, be known as someone that won't quit until the game's finally over. And that was the, that was the big emphasis on the sideline today. Next up for North Dakota, a home date with Montana State Hall of Fame weekend at the University of North Dakota. We'll preview that game later on the show. UND Sports Extra on Midco Sports Network is presented by the University of North Dakota, RydellCars.com, and Farmers Union Insurance. The UND women's hockey team faces rival Minnesota Thursday and Friday at the Ralph. We're joined by UND forward Amy Menke, who is this week's WCHA Co-Offensive Player of the Week. Congratulations. Thank you. You're coming off a series at St. Cloud State, a win and a tie. It ended up being an overtime loss. But let's talk about the tie this past weekend a little bit because it featured your team scoring three extra attacker goals over the final several minutes of the game. Have you ever been involved in something like that? No, actually it was really crazy. And um, I think, well, first, the first thing is we put ourselves in that situation. You know I mean? Yeah. We, we put ourselves down by three goals, which was unfortunate. But I think it shows a lot about our team, how we battled back in the last eight minutes. And we, if anyone doesn't know, we pulled our goalie with eight minutes left and just were pretty relentless. And we ended up scoring three unanswered goals. So yeah. crazy finish. Yeah. Uh, overall start to the season as you see it for the first month here. Um, it, I think it's been okay, you know, um, I think we have some, some things we still need to work on, some things we need to touch up on, but I think we'll just keep getting better as the season goes on. Yeah. You stayed in Grand Forks this past summer along mm -hmm. with several other players. Yeah. Um, in, in speaking with our analyst, Monique Lamroux, she, she believes it has really advanced your game and yeah. the others' games uh, that have stayed up here last summer. How so and do you agree? Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's, there's so many tools that this school offers, obviously with the Ralph and, um, the weight room and all the free ice that we get in the summer. So you can pretty much skate whenever you want if there's no one on. So I think that we just have the tools and we just have to use them and take advantage of yeah. them. All right, Minnesota coming to the Ralph Thursday and Friday unbeaten. Uh, you know, their, their credentials speak for themselves. So how can you win these hockey games coming up Thursday and Friday? Um, well, I think we have to have the mentality we had um, at the end of that Mankato or St. Cloud series this past weekend. I think we just got to be relentless and – if we just keep pressuring them, hard, pressuring them hard, I think we'll do great if we do that for 60 minutes. Hannah Brandt, Danny Cameronisi, two of the top four leading scorers in the nation. Do you try to do anything matchup-wise with that line? Um, I'm not sure yet what the coaches are thinking, but I think um, whoever we put against them, obviously, they're good players, and but we can skate right there with them, so I think we'll be good. Being a Minnesota native, I'm, I'm sure you know many of these ladies yeah. very well. Yeah, I've grown up playing with pretty much all of the Minnesota girls, so it's always fun on that aspect too of it. UND has been one team in the regular season over the last few years that has beaten Minnesota. You think there's yeah. a little something in their back of the head anytime they take the ace yeah, with you guys? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think they always have that. We're a gritty team to play against, and I think they always know it's going to be a physical battle. Yeah. So uh, as you look at this series, what are some things that you have to do well to put yourself in position to win the games? Um, well, I think we're going to have to, when we get the opportunity to score the chances, we're, we're going to need to bury them right away. And I think um, – we're not going to get as many as we normally get in some series, but I think, so yeah, once we get our chances, we just got to bear down. Playing with a lead or getting a lead? Yes. Big against yeah. the Gophers are not as big considering their firepower and ability to come back from deficits. Yeah, that's a big thing too. We got to be strong right off the hop, right off the first face off and the first shift. So I think that's important. All right, Amy. Congratulations on being WCHA Co-Offensive Player of the Week. Thank you. And good luck this uh, Thursday and Friday yeah. against the Gophers. We'll have both games for you live here on Midco Sports Network. Join us 7 o'clock Thursday night and 7 o'clock Friday night for North Dakota, Minnesota women's hockey here on Midco Sports Network. We're back with more next. UND Sports Extra on Midco Sports Network is presented by the University of North Dakota, RydellCars.com and Farmers Union Insurance. 
The UND volleyball team back home after an extended road trip. It has a two-match Big Sky Series this weekend. Sacramento State in Thursday to kick off the weekend, and head coach Mark Pryor is back. His team split a pair of matches on the road last weekend, falling at Northern Arizona, beating Southern Utah. How are things going these days? We'll get into the injury situation here in a bit, but overall, how are things going? You know, uh, I think that um, with all that we've kind of experienced over the last month as far as just smaller injuries becoming bigger injuries, becoming season-ending injuries, uh, the kids are handling exceptionally well. Mm -hmm. Um, They know it's like, hey, just next man up. All right, it stinks, but we've still got a job to do, and it just means that, I mean, we can still do it, just gets a heck of a lot harder. Yeah, well, you can never plan. Right. For these type of things, especially when you have multiple injuries at one position as you yes. do. Yes. You know, it, it it's difficult. Uh, you know, we've talk, talked about maybe moving some things around, but instead of making us worse at two or three positions by moving some things around, we're just going to just keep plugging people in to the spots that where people, you know, have, have gotten injured. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, uh, so far we'll just uh, keep grinding it out and the kids are getting after it in practice. We'll see how it goes, and the one thing I know that you can always count on is our kids can give massive effort. Let's take a look back at your uh, road trip last week. And Northern Arizona, one of the contenders in the Big Sky, uh, what were the bottom line items in this match from your team's perspective, Mark? Uh, bottom line is we got beat. Uh, we got beat pretty bad. Um, we, uh, they're right now top 50 nationally. They're doing very well. Uh, they did a couple things that we don't. Um, they were serving the ball a little, little tougher than we were. We weren't able to handle the receive. They've also got a senior outside hitter in Janae Vanderplug, who's probably going to be the conference player of the year. She makes zero mistakes. She keeps them going. Um, they just uh, they just really played well, and it was one of those matches where we knew we had to be on with everybody, and we only had about two kids that were really on. And thus, 3-0 <laughs> was the final. Yeah. In a 25-13, 25-15, 25-14 final. Courtney Place did not play in this match. Chelsea Mulger led your team with eight kills. Fast forward to another five-set match, and you're good at five-set matches. This one came against Southern Arizona or Southern Utah, rather, on Saturday. And uh, you had several players reach a number of career highs in this match. We did. I think a lot of that was the fact that um, the match seemed like it took seven hours. Um, (laughs) So there was going to be ample opportunity. Uh, I I do think that uh, we just really, um, we just competed really well. And sometimes it wasn't really pretty, but we got it done. Uh, It was nice that uh, we were able to kind of grind through uh, even when we had some bad breaks, um, it was good to see the kids go, hey, we've traveled 10,000 miles in the last 11 days. Let's finish it with a W. Which you did. Courtney Place had a career high in kills with 21, and you went on to win this in the marathon. As you said, uh, 3-2 was the final. You had some uh, unbelievable individual efforts. Sydney Griffin with a career high 70 assists. Mackenzie Hart, a dig number that uh, we've rarely seen. And as we take a look at what Hart is doing here this season, uh, how, how again do you kind of explain to the common man her impact she's having match to match? Well, uh, I, I can explain it, but I probably need charts and graphs yeah. and like a PowerPoint. Uh, but what I can say is uh, she's really important. <laughs> she's really important. She Everything kind of starts with her from a serve-receive standpoint to a defensive standpoint. And uh, – just from from what she's done, um, we're going to miss her. We're so glad she's here. All right. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. We'll recap your homestand for a change coming up next week here on UND Sports Extra. UND Sports Extra on Midco Sports Network is presented by the University of North Dakota, RydellCars.com, and Farmers Union Insurance. Saturday at the Alara Center, North Dakota and Montana State. One o'clock kickoff. Bubba, what are your uh, team's points of emphasis this week? Well, we've just got to get better on defense at defending the deep ball, and that's a point of emphasis. And then offensively, we need more balance. And, uh, you know, we got the number one scoring offense and number one 
yards gained offense coming to town. Many picked them as the preseason conference champs. So it's a great opportunity for our football team to get better and, and win a big game at home. Give us an idea when you talk about getting better in the back end. Uh, what are your corners where your safeties have to do to hold up better on the back end when it comes to the passing game? Well, some of it's technique, some of it's communication, but when that ball is in the air, we got to go compete for the football because a lot of those throws right now are what we refer to as 50-50 balls. They're going to put it out there and say, our receiver is better than your guy out there. Who's going to go get it? Yeah. And Montana State will throw some of those balls. You know, it all starts with their quarterback. He's very good, and he's going to buy time and be able to throw the ball deep down the field. Well, you refer to him, and he is one of the elite players in the big sky, Dakota Prukup. Prukup. And uh, he's having a great year throwing the football, but he's also a guy that can make plays with his legs, so really a dual threat. Yeah, he really is. He's difficult to defend. And we got to be up for the challenge. You know, this is maybe just the recipe we need. Challenge our guys with the high-powered offense coming in and eliminate those big plays and then challenge our offense. Hey, we got to keep them off the field by moving the football. And a chance for your team to get back to the 500 mark in conference play. No question. Big game for us. Yeah. All right, Bubba, we're looking forward to it. We'll have your game live Saturday afternoon on Midcoast Sports Network, a 1 o'clock kickoff. Hope you can join me, Ryan Kosowski, and Kelly Howell, UND and Montana State. We thank you for watching and invite you to stay tuned for North Dakota Hockey with Bradbury next here on Midcoast Sports Network.